Hi, I'm Jeannie, and welcome to Craft Jeannie. Today we're going to talk about t-shirts. You probably have a lot of t-shirts in your house. It could be from school, maybe from clubs that you've belonged to, or um, volunteer work that you've done. The problem is you have all these shirts. Maybe you don't wear them anymore, maybe you can't wear them anymore, and you end up with a pile that looks something like this. So you have all these shirts and they end up in a box, or in a closet, or stacked up someplace. And you don't want to get rid of them because, I mean, this was his first football game. How can you get rid of this shirt? So what do you do? Well, I will tell you what you're going to do. The answer to all your problems is in this little spool of thread. Well, the spool of thread plus a sewing machine, scissors, a ruler, and a lot of hours. This is not a quick project. This project is going to end up taking you a good long weekend or several evenings to do. It's quite a few hours, but it's well worth it. What we're going to make is this blanket made out of t-shirts. This one happens to be for my niece and it's from a lot of the different things that she did in high school, different plays that she went to, concerts, um, dance team and everything. It's a great way to use up all those t-shirts, turn it into something that is useful, something that you're going to want to use and it's not a pile of shirts laying in your closet. So let's go ahead and get started. You see the piles of t-shirts that we have. The first step we're going to do is cut these t-shirts up into squares so we can sew them. I have a template and this is a, a quilting template. It's hard plastic and I use it with a rotary cutter. This one is 12 and a half inches by 12 and a half inches square. I'm going to have a half inch seam allowance all the way around so I'll have an 11 and a half by 11 and a half inch square when it's done. I usually make these at about five foot by six foot in size for like a throw you would have while you're watching TV or whatever. This one I have 36 shirts so it's going to be uh, six foot by six foot square. So let's go ahead and get started. And by the way I'm making these 12 by 12 in size but you can make them of any size. I have a small little template which is six and a half by six and a half inches. This is great if you're going to make your quilt out of say little baby t-shirts or little small children's t-shirts. You obviously can't get a square this big out of those. You'll just need more squares to do it. And then these are, are the hard lucite and I use them with my rotary cutter but you could even make a template out of paper or cardboard and then just hand cut these squares out as well. Whatever works for you. You can make the squares whatever size you want according to what you want to make, but 12 by 12 is a good size for the adult um, quilts and 6 by 6 is a good size for the baby quilts. So let's go ahead and take a look at our first t-shirt. Okay, this shirt, like most typical shirts, has a pattern in the middle and when I lay my square down I can see that it'll just fit inside, uh, inside the square. That's the one thing I like about using a clear template rather than a paper template is I can actually see where it is and line it up the way I want it to. Uh, make sure that you have the wrinkles out of it and let's go ahead and get started. Now these are extremely extremely sharp. Be very careful when you use them. Uh, when you cut, cut away from you. Don't cut towards you. Don't cut under your hand. Just, be, just use caution with this. And rather than cutting under my arm, I'm going to come actually this way and cut back. Again, always away from you. Okay, so set this aside. and I always close it up when I set it aside. You're going to pull the t-shirt away that we don't want. You're going to have a big pile of these when you're done. Take off the template and there is your square front and back. Lay it over here. Now, you may have noticed I have these folded every other way going down here. You want to keep front and back together. You could always pin these two together. I would not recommend that because you'll end up, the pins will come loose and you'll have pins all over the floor. You will step on them, someone will step on them. It will not be a happy, uh, a happy event. So just lay them every other way. Lay them down until you have your stack of 30 or 36 um, t-shirts and then we'll go on to the next step. Now I want to show you what happens if you have a t-shirt 
that has a picture on the back rather than just plain on the back like this one. So let's go to another shirt. Okay, this shirt you can see has a picture on the front that I want to use and a picture on the back. Well, what would happen if I put my template down, line it up, and flip it over? I have this so close to the top, it's not where I want it to be. I'd really rather center the back up a little bit taller and get some of the red here. So what you're going to do with this shirt, it's going to take you a little bit longer to do these, but the effect will be nice. We're going to actually cut this shirt apart. We're going to cut it into two. Take the back and set it aside. We'll cut that one separately. And now we're going to cut just the front of the shirt by itself. This way I can center it up whichever way I want and then we'll center the back up as well. So let me get these cut apart. Okay, so I cut out the front and the back separately. I cut the front by itself, cut the back. Had I left them together, the back would have been cut off right about here because of the placement. So by taking them apart, we get the whole picture on the back and the whole picture on the front. So we're going to stack these up just like a pair, just as if we had cut them together, and it's going to go into the pile. And then let's continue on. Okay, now you may come across a t-shirt, especially if you're making these out of women's shirts, where you find that you have a v-neck, or perhaps the picture you want is so close to the collar that if you put the square up, it's going to be like this, and you're going to get the collar in there and it won't be square across the top. So let's look at how you might take care of that. On this particular shirt, the pattern is really close to the collar. Now, I could turn it this way and cut it at an angle, but because the shirt was printed and he remembers the shirt being printed sideways like this, I'd actually like to pull it up here. Well, as you can see, when I move the square, part of my square is into that collar. There's nothing back there. If I cut it, I'll have a big hole on that side. But there's a way to fix that. I'm going to take the sleeve off of this shirt. You're going to have plenty of extra fabric, so it's not a problem. And what I would do is take this to my sewing machine. Put a little piece in here and show you. And I'm going to stitch it down. I'm going to stitch it here, and I'm going to stitch it here. So this square, like this, is actually going to have a little corner that shows the neckline of the collar and that. It actually is a very cute effect. I've done that with the V-neck shirts where you put the something behind it. You put a sleeve behind it and then stitch it down so you see the V-neck of it. The person who is getting the blanket is going to go, oh, I remember that shirt, I remember the V and all of that. But you've got fabric behind it to support your shirt. So I'm going to go ahead and sew it and cut this. And I'm going to go through this pile of shirts and get them all cut up, and then we'll go on and show you how to sew this together. Okay, all the shirts are cut up. I've got them all cut up. And what I always do, my next step is to lay them all out so I can look at them and see what I have. Now, I didn't lay these in any pattern. I just laid them down. And right away I can see I need to move a few things around. I've got three light-colored shirts, four of them side by side. I've got two reds next to each other. I don't want that. So now you'll start going through and switching. Let's go ahead and move this one up, move this one down, and switch these and move them around until it's a configuration that you like, that you're pleased with. One tip I want to give you, I have a shirt here that is a very thin t-shirt material. And I happen to have one next to it that's almost as thick as a sweatshirt. If you sew these, they're going to be uneven. You're going to have a blanket with a little weak, thin spot. What I always do is take, leave the back here, put the thick one on top of the thin one, and move the thin one with the thick backing. That way when you sew it up, it'll have an even feel to it. If they're all just regular t-shirts, you shouldn't have that problem, but just in case you're using a sweatshirt or a thin t-shirt, you know you can switch the backs to them. So once you have it all in the configuration, we will take these one 
column at a time, we will sew the first column, lay it back down, then sew the second column, and then the third, all independently, and then we'll hook them all together. And what I do so that I'm not running back and forth from the sewing machine to pick these up is the way I do them. First one goes on top of the second one, goes on top of the third one, the fourth one. This way I know these first two are going to be my first ones. That's the next one in the row and so on. So let me take these shirts a column at a time over to my sewing machine and I'll meet you over there. Okay, we're ready to sew these together. I brought my first column of t-shirts over here and we're going to take the first two t-shirts. Now, if you remember from the blanket, it has a little fringe on it, so let me lay this one upside down, this one right on top. And in this case, I am going to pin it together so we can get a good, even uh, seam. When it's sewn, you want both right sides to be faced up. You want the seam to be on top. Normally, the seam goes inside when you're sewing. In this case, the seam is going to be on top. So I've got them together. What we're going to do is we're going to start sewing. Measure down a half inch. Start your stitch. Go all the way across. We're making a half inch um, seam allowance. And stop one half inch from the other end. Now, on my machine, I know where the half inch mark is, but you can always put pieces of tape if you want tape to mark the half inch seam allowance out here, tape to put where it starts. I've got markings on my machines already, but you can, you can tape it um, if you need to do that. For my machine, it may be the same with yours. From where the needle goes in to the end is a half inch, so I know I can start there. Always lock your stitch. Go back and forth. And if you'll notice, I'm using a very uh, tight stitch. Mine says 2.5. Pretty tight stitch. I'm keeping an eye over here to make sure that I'm staying at my one inch seam allowance, or half inch seam allowance. So you can see I left half inch opening at the top, half inch at the back, and half inch seam allowance. And just take your time with this to make sure that you have them all sewn the right way. Seam allowance is on the top. The next one, seam allowance is also going to be on the top. So lay that one down, make sure your shirts are lined up. And really if they're not perfectly aligned, if they're off by a little tiny, I don't know, 16th, 32nd of an inch. It's okay. It's not going to ruin your shirt, but try to line them up as much as possible. Um, again, I'm going to sew on the white fabric so that you can easily see. There we go. Make sure it's straight. Let me do one more for you. And right there. And there you have your third shirt. I'm going to go ahead and finish all the shirts, do the full column. I'll go put it down, I'll bring the next column over, and we'll get all the columns sewn. And then I'll show you how we're going to sew the, um, the columns together to form our blanket. So all the columns are sewn together. Now we're going to take the first two columns, stitch them together, and so forth. We're just about done with this portion of it. So I'm going to take my first two columns and I will meet you back at the sewing machine. Before you sew these, you want to make sure they're lined up. So, I've got them squared up here. I'm going to put a pin just to hold it together. Next one. Don't worry right now which way the flap goes. Just get them pinned and, and held together.
and you'll do that all the way down. I'm going to pin the first few and I'm going to show you how these are sewn pretty much the same way. If you remember, we left a half inch open. When we sew, we're going to leave a half inch unsewn here, sew it across right to that point, back stitch, cut the thread, come on this side and do the same thing. The reason we do that is so we don't end up with this big knot in the corner with all four seams on it. So let's go ahead and get the first uh, square going. Make sure the seams are out of the way and we're going to stop right at that half inch mark. Back it up to lock it in place. Cut it. And remove this pin. Now I make sure all the seams are to the other side. We're going to start right, probably can't see it in the black, but right where the thread ends, we're going to start it right there. Back stitch to lock it in place and continue for your half inch. Lock it in place, cut the thread. And we're going to go that way all the way through and attach all of these columns together then on to the next step. Okay, we're down to the last square that we need to sew. A couple things I wanted to point out. Your blanket is gonna get pretty heavy, so try to make sure that you have a table or something you can support it on. Otherwise, it's gonna be pulling down off the machine. Also, if you notice, I used black thread all the way through out here. You're not gonna to wanna to change colors for every square. Just pick whatever your main color is. This one was mostly dark, so I used black. So let me go ahead and finish up this last square. Now we have one last sewing job to do, and that is we are going to go all the way around the outside, a half inch from the edge. You can either, let me go ahead and get it started. When you come to the junction, you can either stop here, back up like we did, cut it and go to the next one and start there, or you can just go ahead and flip it open and sew across it. We'll be cutting these apart, so whichever way you want to do it. If you're getting sick of sewing at this point, you may want to go all the way across, but it's up to you. Myself, I actually like opening it up because I don't want this to be a tear point where it's going to rip and unsew, even though we double stitched it. To me, it feels a little more secure to go across it. Just make sure that you are going right at the point where you have an opening there. And we're going to cut this apart later so it's not going to uh, leave a seam like that. So I'm going to go ahead and finish going all the way around this blanket. When, it, uh, when I'm done with it, I'll come back and I'll show you the final step and we're just about done with this. We're done with the sewing part and here's the last step that we're going to do. Now I'm not going to lie to you about this step. This one's going to take some time and it's going to take some patience and probably going to take some hand muscle. We're going to go through now and put little slices, quarter of an inch, maybe a little smaller, uh, whatever you'd like, all the way around the edge. You want to make sure that you slice it not as close to the thread as you can, but don't go through. If you cross through the thread by mistake, stop what you're doing, take it to your machine and stitch it back over the top. Don't do anything else until you stitch it. Now, I have these scissors and these are great for cutting, but I've got this pair of scissors. If you're going to do any of these, they're spring-loaded. And they're kind of nice because they snip and uh, save your hand. I want to show you what to do. Remember on the seam on the edge, I went ahead and just sewed over it. 
go right up to the edge of the seam and clip it, right up to the edge and clip it, and that frees it up, and you're fine. You're going to go through every single seam all the way around and, uh, and clip it. The reason we went to the corner like that, you're going to have these. You're going to have parts of these that are going to come off. You, when you clip, the little corner piece is going to come off. That's fine. It's supposed to happen. So go through your quilt that you just made, clip every single row. When you think you're all done, do yourself a favor, lay it out and look at it because you want to make sure that you've got everything. Sometimes I think I'm done and I find a row that I missed or something. So you will clip the entire thing and then if you look here, the little fringes start to kind of curl up. What you want to do to ensure that it does that, because you want to see that all the way around, when you're completely done with it, it's all clipped, you can wash your quilt and throw it in the dryer and they will fluff back up. If you don't have time for that because you're making this for a party and you've got to leave pretty soon, you can spritz water on all of the seams, uh, throw it in the dryer and it'll fluff right back up. So go find a bunch of t-shirts uh, you know that you have laying around and, and go ahead and give it a try. Like I said, it's not a quick project, but it's an easy project and it's a lot of fun.